Over a century ago, Lord Kelvin demonstrated the formation of a parallel plate capacitor, the basis of the scanning Kelvin probe, or SKP, technique. The measure of the contact potential difference between two materials was then demonstrated in 1938, laying the groundwork for the SKP measurements performed today. In this video presentation, we will introduce SKP on the M470. This video presentation is broken into three parts. The background and principles of SKP will be introduced. Its implementation on the M470 will be shown. Finally, we will look at the expected results for a simple test sample. Let's first look at the background of the SKP technique. There are two different experiment modes when using the SKP technique on the M470. The first is the Kelvin probe measurements, SKP area scan and line scan. These are traditional SKP measurements providing contact potential difference data. This is typically the Kelvin probe data published in the literature. The other is the topography mode, which includes the capacitive height measurement, or CHM, and capacitive tracking measurement, or CTM, area and line scans. These experiments provide topography data using the same SKP setup. Typically, the topography data from these experiments is used to perform height tracking SKP measurements to maintain the probe to sample distance throughout the measurement, although in some limited cases they are used as standalone experiments. We will look at both experiment types in more detail in the following slides. Regardless of the signal of interest, the basics of the technique are the same. Scanning Kelvin probe is based on a vibrating parallel plate capacitor. It is used for measuring the contact potential difference between the probe and the sample, providing a highly sensitive measure of the sample surface. The contact potential difference measured in SKP can be directly correlated to the corrosion potential or the work function of the sample. What happens when you have two materials in direct electrical connection as occurs for the probe and sample in the SKP measurement? This connection results in the flow of charge between the two. This causes their Fermi levels to equilibrate, forming a surface charge between them. The result of the surface charge is the formation of a capacitor with a contact potential difference, Vc, also called the Volta potential. To determine the contact potential difference, a backing potential is applied between the probe and sample to null, or eliminate, the charge. This backing potential is equal but opposite the contact potential. How is the contact potential difference determined? The potential measured is related to the probe to sample distance D by the set of equations shown. In these, C is the capacitance, Q the charge, V the potential, epsilon zero the vacuum permittivity, epsilon R the relative permittivity, A the surface area of the capacitor defined by a probe, and D the probe to sample distance. When looking at these equations, therefore, we can see that the potential is directly related to the probe to sample distance. In an SKP experiment, the probe is vibrated in Z perpendicular to the sample, changing the probe to sample distance. This in turn causes an AC current to form. In the Kelvin probe measurements, a DC signal, either contact potential difference for SKP, or probe to sample distance for topography measurements is of interest. The AC signal is therefore demodulated to obtain the final DC signal of interest. In the standard SKP measurement, in order to measure the contact potential difference, the probe and the sample are connected and a variable bias is applied between them. In SKP topography measurement, however, a constant potential is applied to the sample. This potential is typically minus 10 volts. However, it can be set by the user anywhere from minus 10 to 10 volts. A different value would be used if the sample could be easily damaged by the high voltage applied. As with the standard SKP measurements, a capacitor is formed by the probe and the sample. As a reminder, the capacitance is related to the probe to sample distance by the equations shown. Note that in this equation, there are only two variables, 
D, the probe to sample distance, and C, the measured capacitance. By measuring the capacitance, therefore, it is possible to determine and map the local probe to sample distance. On Biologics SKP470, there are two experiment types which can be used to measure sample topography. The first is the capacitive height measurement, or CHM, which is a constant height method of measuring the sample topography. In this mode, the probe Z position is maintained throughout the measurement. As the probe to sample distance changes, the measured capacitance changes. It is this change in the probe to sample distance determined from the changing capacitance which is plotted. Because the CHM measurements are constant height, they are most useful for flat samples. It is also of use for performing fast topography measurements because it can be performed in sweep scan mode. Capacitive tracking measurement, or CTM, is the second measurement option. In this constant distance technique, the probe to sample distance is maintained throughout the measurement by moving the probe in Z to maintain the measured capacitance. In this case, the probe position is plotted throughout the measurement to map the sample topography. CTM is particularly useful for non-flat samples, for example, to curved pieces. However, because the probe position changes throughout the experiment, CTM measurements are slower than CHM measurements. We must briefly focus on the use of SKP for corrosion and coatings measurements, which make up one of the largest research areas for SKP. The contact potential difference measured in SKP is related to the corrosion potential of the sample. The energy required to transfer an electron is the sum of the energy required to transfer an electron from the metal to the electrolyte, then from the electrolyte to the gas phase, and finally from the gas phase to the vibrating probe. The result is that the corrosion potential is directly related to the contact potential difference. It is possible to calibrate the SKP experiment by measuring the E core with a conventional reference electrode allowing the missing constant to be found. However, more generally from the SKP measurements, we can say that when the contact potential difference decreases, we can infer a decrease in corrosion potential. Well, when the contact potential difference increases, we can infer an increase in the corrosion potential. We can also rank the corrosion potentials of different regions in a sample using the measured contact potential difference. What are the advantages of the SKP technique? SKP is highly sensitive to surface properties. This makes it useful for following changes in a sample surface, such as the formation of an oxide layer. By calibrating the SKP probe, it is possible to convert the contact potential difference to determine the sample work function. This makes SKP one of only a few techniques available to measure work function. Unlike other local electrochemistry techniques, in SKP the sample is not exposed to electrolyte, providing a snapshot of the sample at a given time. Finally, SKP performs all of these measurements in a non-destructive way. SKP has found widespread use in a number of fields. It is used extensively in corrosion, particularly to visualize local corrosion. In coatings, it has been used to follow coating breakdown. In materials research, SKP has been used to screen for contaminants on silicon wafers. SKP is one of very few techniques which can be used to determine the work function of a material. Therefore, it has been of particular use in sustainable energy to investigate photovoltaic materials. Finally, we have seen use in catalysis studies for looking at the effect of surface treatment on catalytic activity. So how is SKP implemented on the M470 with the SKP470 module? The components used to perform SKP measurements on the M470 are shown. A control PC is used to run the M470 software, which interfaces with the instrument to set up and run the SKP experiments. The control electronics interface between the software, computer, and the various electronics required by the system. An XYZ scanning stage is used to allow the probe to be approached to the sample in Z, follow sample topography if desired, and to raster scan the surface in X and Y. 
These are automated to allow area maps of the contact potential difference of the sample to be produced. A piezo vibration actuator is required to vibrate the probe at known, repeatable amplitudes throughout the measurement. This results in an AC signal, which is then demodulated by the lock-in amplifiers. The electrometer is required to measure the electrical potential of the system. The backing potential controller applies the potential required to null the charge between the probe and sample. This is done in real time using a PID control loop. Because the probe to sample distance affects the final signal measured and therefore sample tilt can affect the measurement, it is important that the sample can be mounted to remove tilt. On the M470, this is typically achieved using the trisol. Of particular importance in the SKP measurement is the probe. As with other scanning probe electrochemistry techniques, this affects the resolution and quality of the final measurement. Biologic's standard probe is a 500 micron tungsten wire within a brass shield used to reduce parasitic noise in the measurement. The diameter and material of the probe are important with regards to the final measurement. The contact potential difference is measured relative to the probe. Therefore, the material of the probe affects the final measured values. It also influences the voltage resolution of the measurement. The material selected must have a stable and reproducible work function to ensure reproducible contact potential difference values are measured under the experimental conditions. The lateral resolution of the probe is related to the probe diameter, with smaller probes generally offering higher resolution. For higher resolution applications, we would therefore recommend using our 150 micron probe. It should be noted that SKP differs from other scanning probe measurements in that the probe size does not always directly correlate to the measurement resolution. In SKP, an important factor is the fringing effect where the measured probe signal is influenced by an area larger than just the region directly beneath the probe. As SKP probes become smaller, the influence of fringing increases, thereby reducing its lateral resolution. What sort of results are expected when an SKP experiment is performed? The parts required to perform a measurement of the iron-zinc test sample are shown. Aside from the sample, these are the 500 micron SKP probe and the tricell without the glass body in place. The measurement area was selected to cover the entire exposed iron region. The exposed iron can be seen to have a higher contact potential difference than the zinc layer, as expected due to the higher corrosion potential of iron compared to zinc. To summarize, we have shown that SKP can be used to measure either contact potential difference or sample topography. The contact potential difference measurement can be used to determine the corrosion potential or work function of a sample. This is useful because it means SKP offers a non-destructive measure of differences of the sample surface state. Because of these and other advantages, SKP has found use investigating corrosion encodings, materials, photovoltaics, and catalysis samples. Please visit our website for further information on the background and applications of SKP. If you have any questions or require further information on the SKP 470, please contact your local biologic representative.